From my experience, both up here in Alaska and uh, on other parts of the world, when somebody is in trouble, it's never one of those nice, calm days. And there's more bad days up here in Alaska than there are good days. So for that reason, we need to be masters of our trade. In the heart of our state, there is a 10,000 square mile place of waterways, islands, fjords, and glaciers. It is quintessential Alaska, an icon of beauty, wildlife, wilderness, and commerce, because these waters are also home to hundreds of large vessel transits every year. Unfortunately, this coastline has witnessed some significant maritime disasters. And so we learned, and continue to learn, about how to protect and advocate for this place. This is one subject that we uh, have been real interested in. We know that a ship is a mechanical device made by man, which is subject to mechanical failures, be dead in the water, and the North Gulf Coast of Alaska and Prince William Sound is not a place to be dead in the water. Establishing a tow and establishing it in a timely manner is critical. If you don't do that, uh, you lose an opportunity to keep something really bad from happening. And that's gonna have a negative effect on the economy of Alaska. The industry has come great lengths in, uh, in being able to establish tows. And we've learned uh, some of these lessons the hard way, but we continue to improve the system uh, to do those things, to protect our economy, to protect the people that are out there at sea, and to make sure that we're able to respond in a timely and efficient manner. The Prince William Sound Regional Citizens Advisory Council, an Alaska nonprofit that promotes the environmentally safe operation of the Valdez Marine Terminal and its associated oil tankers, commissioned a study and discovered something you need to know. So our organization commissioned Gloston to perform and look into best available technology for line throwing devices. We realized that line throwing devices had not been updated or been improved for many years. New technology today is far better than that. The study really was asking the question, what, what are the tools out there for the purpose of connecting a messenger line to a disabled tank vessel in Prince William Sound? And which of those is best for that job? A critical step must be taken to establish tow between a vessel in distress and a vessel of opportunity. Taking a disabled vessel in tow is inherently dangerous. The delicate first act of approaching and passing a tow line from one vessel to the other remains one of the most important and widely overlooked elements of emergency towing operations at sea. In my opinion, the reason that this was such an important study is because the council hit on something really important that generally gets overlooked when policymakers are talking about um, preventing drift groundings and emergency towing at sea, typically where everyone's attention goes is to how powerful does the tug need to be? Um, how big does the tug need to be? What was interesting about this study is it recognized that no matter how big and no matter how powerful and how capable the tugboat is, it all boils down to this one act. One of these vessels has to pass a line to the other and that's the beginning of the establishment of an emergency towing connection. And if you fail in doing that, regardless of how, how magical the tugboat is, you could have a drift grounding. You could have oil spillage. This is an important piece to look at because if we fail at this, the, given the confined nature of Prince William Sound, we could end up with tank vessels on the beach, even though we have some of the most sophisticated tugs in the world. So then they said, well, geez, okay, we understand 
just how critical this this part of the rescue evolution is. If it all boils down to that, then we need to absolutely make sure that we're using the best tool out there for that purpose, because we can't risk failure. Gloston, a Seattle-based naval architecture and marine engineering firm, took on the task of finding answers with a scientific approach. In phase one, they researched a number of recent loss of propulsion events that have occurred in Alaska. Then they determined which devices looked like the best technology, at least on paper. In phase two, they took those devices out on the water and using actual tugs and barges, tested them in real world scenarios. So we came up with an objective scoring process for these different devices. The practical testing yielded interesting and helpful results. The study proved which devices are the best available technology to establish tow. The highest scoring device in the evaluation is the PLT Solus pneumatic line thrower. This device fires a projectile using compressed air and can be reused without any replenishment costs. It has good range, meets U.S. Coast Guard performance requirements to obtain approval for use, and meets Solus requirements as well. In a nutshell, the findings of the study, the ultimate recommendation was carriage of a, a Restec PLT line thrower, which is a compressed gas type, together with a surface float line. Those two systems together would really cover all bases and also allow operators to um, conduct routine drills and uh, have familiarity with these devices, something that can be reused an infinite number of times. Sure, the takeaway from this is keep a ship off the rocks. We encourage regulators to take a hard look at this study, which involves the latest technology and uh, scrutinize current regulations and if deficient in this area, bring them up to date. This video only touches on the surface of the study, which includes literature review, policy review, plus full pros and cons of all the different devices tested. To fully grasp the safety merits of these devices and proper training practices, view the study for yourself. Visit the Council's website at pwsrcac.org.